You see these? Worst idea for a breakout game ever. As I've established before, there are a lot of games that emulate Breakout. The whole idea of breaking down a wall of bricks with a ball and paddle, and while the occasional one is pretty good, it's a formula that's so simple that way too many such games are not up to the same standards. And while they might get certain aspects of a good Breakout game right, they usually get some of them wrong too. Today's ancient DOS game, Electronoid, is somewhere in the middle, because it has some good points, but also some bad points. So before we get into the meat of the game, let's take a look at the game stats. Electronoid was created and released by Pixel Painters in 1995 and is a one-player breakout clone. It features VGA 320x200-256 color graphics and support for both PC speaker and Sound Blaster sound. As for its current release date, this is a bit ambiguous. You see, Pixel Painters had the full versions of some of its old DOS games, including Electronoid, up on its website for free back around the turn of the century. But if you read the license agreements for these free versions, they say that these games may only be obtained from their website, that they're promotional releases, and that they shouldn't be considered freeware. Well, Pixel Painters kind of died while this was still in effect. And there are websites you can obtain the full version from that only host legitimate downloads, such as www.dosgames.com. So it makes it very confusing whether or not it should be considered shareware or freeware at this point, especially since there's no longer any way to register the shareware version. Now as you probably already guessed, the title of the game is a take on Arkanoid, which was one of the first breakout clones to feature power-ups and enemies, so it's very common to see games like this one with titles that end in Noid, like Bananoid, Aquanoid, and Amiganoid, just to name a few. Ultimately, the game comes down to the same basic formula. You have a paddle and a ball. You hit the ball with the paddle to send it into the air, and when the ball hits a brick, it destroys it. Destroy every brick to move on to the next level. Watch out for enemies which can get in the way of your ball, collect power-ups that drop from the bricks to make life easier, and try to avoid those particular power-ups that do bad things. Apart from using some circuitry-style graphics, which, as I've said before, is very uncommon to see in games in general, Electronoid does have one very unique feature that sets it apart from the rest. Enemies that drop balls. In fact, this game has a grand total of 10 different kinds of balls that can be on the field, though not all at once because of certain limits built into the game. Though I'm not going to describe each kind of ball themselves, because I'll easily get to them all just by describing the other aspects of the game, such as the power-up pellets. There are 11 different kinds of power-up pellets you can acquire, 9 of which are good to get, and 2 of which are not. To get one, all you have to do is break a standard brick while there's no other pellets on screen. 99% of the time, this will cause a power-up pellet to drop. The good pellets include plus, which makes your paddle bigger, S, which slows the ball down, D, which divides the ball into three, P, which turns all of your balls into power balls that can pass straight through most bricks, C, which gives you a catch paddle that can catch balls and launch them at your discretion, L, which gives you a laser paddle that can rapidly shoot down bricks, M, which gives you a missile launcher with each missile capable of destroying an entire column of bricks, X, which lets you exit a level without having to clear everything, and E, which gives you an extra paddle. The two bad ones are F, which makes all the balls faster, and minus, which makes your paddle smaller. It's important to note that every time you collect a pellet, any power-ups currently in effect are lost, with the exception of divided balls. This includes grabbing extra paddles, so make sure you really don't mind losing the power-up currently in effect before you grab another pellet. It's also important to know that certain kinds of pellets won't show up under certain conditions. For instance, you won't see any pellets for extra paddles if you already have six in total, and you won't see any pellets to divide your ball if you already have two or more on the field. 
One last thing about the power-up pellets is that, since only one can be on the field at a time, the best way to ensure you get the most power-up options possible is to break as few of the standard bricks as possible. So if a power-up's falling that you don't want, try your best to keep the ball aimed at non-standard bricks, or if you have a catch paddle, just hold on to the ball until the power-up goes away. Actually, this kind of leads us into the controls. The mouse controls in this game work pretty well, it's just the people making this game didn't understand proper ball meets paddle physics. The way it's supposed to work is that the direction the ball goes when it hits the paddle should be based only on where the ball hits the paddle, i.e. if the ball hits the exact center, it should go straight up, and the further from the center it hits, the more of an angle the ball's trajectory should take. This game doesn't work that way. The way it works here is that if you hit the middle area of the paddle, the ball simply deflects back up at the same angle it's already going at. And if the ball hits one of the edges of the paddle, only then is its trajectory changed based on what direction the ball is already going in and which edge of the paddle hit the ball. This makes aiming the ball virtually impossible, so all you can really do is just keep bouncing the ball back up until you clear the level. Now, this wouldn't be so bad if the game wasn't that long and wasn't that difficult, but there's about a hundred levels, I think. Though I'm not 100% sure about that because the game doesn't actually tell you. And once you get to level 39, gold bricks appear. Now, these bricks block everything, including weapons and power balls, so any level where you have to deal with gold bricks is going to take a significant amount of time to clear. That said, there is a password feature in the game, so you can always stop your game at any point, and the password you're given records not only where you left off, but the number of paddles you have, and your score. Which kind of defeats the purpose of a high score table if you can just keep going from a certain score as many times as you want. As for the enemies, there's quite a selection of them, and they come in five basic forms. Sympathizers, Floaters, Menacers, Destroyers, and Annihilators. The Sympathizers move really fast and drop your own kind of balls into place so that you can clear away the bricks faster. Floaters just float around and get in the way. Destroyers drop black balls that will destroy your paddle on contact, while the Annihilators add a homing effect to their black balls that make them a lot trickier to dodge. But then we have the Menacers. There's six different kinds of Menacers, and each one has a special kind of ball it can drop into play to, well, make life more menacing for you. The Cyan Menacers drop balls which turn your paddle invisible on contact, though your shadow will still appear, so you won't be completely unable to survive. The Brownish Menacers drop decoy balls, which look a lot like your own, but don't actually do anything. Thankfully, they're just ever so slightly off color from your own balls, and they move more slowly. So most of the time, they're not going to fool you. But trust me when I say that they can. The Copper Menacers drop copper balls that turn bricks into copper bricks on contact. This not only removes the brick's potential to drop power-ups, but also forces you to hit it twice to clear it away. Silver Menacers drop silver balls, which are just like the copper ones really, except that silver bricks take three hits to clear away. And then you have the Green and Red Menacers. The Green Menacers drop balls that turn bricks metallic green. And these special green bricks, for all intents and purposes, are completely immune to everything, except the red balls dropped by the red menacers. In theory, this might sound like a really cool idea, but in practice, having to deal with a metal green brick is the absolute worst thing that could happen to you during this game. In fact, if it does happen, you may just want to quit, write down your password, and restart the level. Yeah, they're that bad. The thing is, any ball dropped by an enemy that's not a sympathizer is destroyed if it hits another enemy, and they move very slowly compared to your own balls. Combine this with your inability to really aim where the balls are going and the constant onslaught of enemies, and it becomes incredibly difficult to deal with metallic green bricks. So, kind of like fires, prevention is the best way to deal with these, and there's three very specific conditions that must be met before any enemy will drop its ball into play. The first is that the enemy has to have room to drop its ball, so if it's currently flying over top of some bricks, it can't. Secondly, your paddle has to be directly underneath, so you can keep an enemy from dropping its ball simply by keeping your paddle away from it. Lastly, there can only ever be two balls in play that are not your own. So for instance, if there's already a decoy ball and a silver ball bouncing around, one of them has to disappear before the enemies can drop more. And all of these tactics work against the green menacers too. However, if you do end up with a metallic green brick, keep in mind that even though only red balls can destroy them, copper and silver balls can still change those bricks into copper or silver ones, which would then allow you to take them out with your regular balls and weapons. Also, you may still get an exit power-up or extra paddles from the remaining standard bricks, so you might actually want to hold off getting a password and restarting the level until there's simply no way to get more power-ups and you still have metallic green bricks to deal with. I do have a couple other tips too. First of all, you may have noticed that there's a lot of animation going on. 
While this animation looks really nice, it can really slow things down, not only between bouts of gameplay, but during the end sequence of a level as well, while the balls are still moving. You can speed up transitional animations by holding either shift key, but when a level ends and you still have a laser paddle or missile launcher, it's actually going to take a moment for those power-ups to disappear before the level truly ends. So even after you destroy the last brick, keep an eye on the balls just in case. It is very possible to lose a paddle or even get game over with a completely empty playfield. My other tip is to pick up divide power-ups as often as you can. Having the extra balls to deal with can be pretty tricky, but once they're out there, the only way to lose them is if they fall off the bottom of the screen, which means you can collect other power-ups and do even more damage. Following a divide power-up with a slow power-up, or even a powerball power-up can really help you clear the playfield, especially once gold bricks come into the equation. Ultimately though, the incredibly repetitive and sublime music, combined with the sheer aggravation of the metallic green bricks and the lack of any real aiming, makes this a breakout clone only suitable for people who really enjoy breakout games. And even then you might not like it that much. If you're not a breakout fan, you'll probably just want to steer clear of this one. Thankfully, DOSBox settings are pretty simple. The game does work perfectly fine with the max or auto cycle settings, but specifying a fixed cycles count of about mm, 10,000 can help to reduce the amount of sound glitches you run into. Now, that's all I have to say about Electronoid, but I want to address you all directly to tell you about something awesome. Thanks to the people at the Good Old Games website and the developers of DOSBox, we have some gift codes to give out. Specifically, the first three people to send in correct guesses for next week's Ancient DOS game are not only going to see their name in the credits as usual, but they're also going to get a gift code for a free download of The Witcher Enhanced Edition from the Good Old Games website. Plus, one lucky person randomly selected out of absolutely everyone who sends in a correct guess is going to get a gift code for a free download of the newly released Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings. Now, even if you don't want either of these games, or you're too young to be playing them because they're kind of mature rated, then you can always give your gift code to a friend or someone. But of course, in order to guess what the next episode is going to be, you're going to need a hint. Well, next Saturday on Ancient DOS Games, I'm going to be reviewing an action RPG that uses experience points. Yeah, I know, that describes pretty much all of them. Except that its sequel did not. Now, if you know which games like that, even if you don't know which games like that, you have nothing to lose by sending in your guest to ADG at Pixelships.com, and make sure you tune in next Saturday to not only find out who won the gift codes, but also to see this game in action.